All right, Ethan, I'm going to do my best to explain this lesson. I hope I'm loud enough. I know you've been out of school for a couple of days, so I'm just going to record my screen and I'm going to try to talk on top of a PowerPoint that I did for lesson two six. Um, any questions that you may still have, um, you just have to ask those whenever you come back to school. We're taking the test tomorrow, so um, I'm going to try to do my best to send your work home and go over this PowerPoint. So I'm going to kind of talk fast. And you can slow me, slow down and, and go back over my voice if you don't quite get it. So we're doing lesson two six and it's on algebraic proofs. Um, there was an activity that went along with this that we got together in groups and we kind of grouped together some of these proofs, but you should pretty much see what's about to happen in this PowerPoint. Um, there's several properties that you're going to need for this lesson. Um, some of the properties you've seen before in Algebra 1, if you didn't, then we're going back over those now and you're going to see those over and over again in this lesson. The first property is the reflexive property. It says that A equals A, which means that whatever you have, it basically equals itself. So that's the reflexive property. The next one is the symmetric property. and It's kind of tough to do this without a smart board, but if X equals 2, then 2 equals X. And what you'll notice is that there's, if you can think about a line of symmetry going be between those two um, equations, then in that case, they're equal. So think about that in terms of a line of symmetry. So that's the symmetric property. The next one is the transitive property, and we've been dealing with that with the paragraph proofs. And in this case, we're, we may not see it as much, but it's important that we go over it again. So A equals B, B equals C, so therefore A equals C. And what you'll notice in the middle of the transitive property is that B is in the middle of both. So A equals B, um, whatever you end up with for that B, it's going to start out the next thing that equals. So that's going to make sense later. Um, the next property is substitution. It says if A equals B, then A may be used in any, any equation instead of B. So it's kind of like you're substituting something. A good rule of thumb whenever you're dealing with the substitution property is that substitution can be thought of as if you're, well, you're substituting something, but think of it as if it's combining like terms or your whatever operation is is being ta is taking place think of it the next step is being substitution because you're simplifying that step um what can help you in this lesson is that if you don't quite if you can't quite place the other properties chances are it's probably going to fall back on substitution um the distributive property you know the addition and subtraction properties if you add some to both sides that's addition if you subtract some from both sides it's subtraction uh, same thing, multiplication and division. Those are all pretty self-explanatory because you should know those already. Um, in this lesson, the algebraic proofs are going to be or organized a certain way, um, and they're going to be done through two-column proofs. In a two-column proof, there's two different sides. There's the statements, and then there's the reasons. The statements are basically your steps. If you can think back to algebra and we saw multi-step equations, the statements are basically each step that took place. The reasons are the properties that go along with it. If you can remember me writing those steps on the board, the reasons are basically what I would have written. The statements are what you guys would have done. So what this lesson does is it combines both the statements and the reasons. And we're about to do a couple of properties in a second that or proofs that show that. So in an algebraic proof, you must show all steps used to solve the equation. Um, so we're doing one step at a time. Each individual step you use is a statement in the proof. So that's what I was pointing out about solving the equation. Each step is a statement. Um, you then give each statement a reason. So if we're doing the distributive property and you're showing yourself multiplying it, well, that reason would be the distributive property. Without explaining it too much, I'm going to go over this proof. Um, you've got to start out with the given and what you're going to prove. That's the problem. You remember me saying um, the answer means nothing if you don't know how to get to it. Well, in this case, we're coming up with the properties to show how we're going to prove our answer. So we got to start out with the given with our two column proof. The given is the beginning. It's basically it is what it is. It's the given. This is the problem. So from here, the next thing that you're supposed to do is the first step. You're supposed to solve this by subtracting 5 from both sides. So I have to show that I'm subtracting 5 
and I have to explain that that's the subtraction property. After that, you should be thinking, well, after I'm subtracting, well, I need to get rid of 5 minus 5, and I need to say 17 minus 5 is 12. So that next step is a property. That next step is a substitution property. So the 5s went away, 17 minus 5 is 12, and you basically combine your like terms or you simplify it on this step. After that, you're supposed to divide, and that's the division property. After you do the division property, well, guess what? We still have to clean it up again. We're not combining like terms, but we're going to be substituting. Think of the substitution step as basically the cleanup step. So these are some things to remember based on that proof. The show me steps are the operations. You have to show that you're doing those operations. The do it steps means that after you show that you're going to multiply or add from both sides, well, you have to say that the next thing to do is to do it, which is the substitution step. Here's another proof. This is probably one that you're not that common with, but you got to get rid of that two to get rid of that fraction. So the first thing to do is a given. I got to multiply by two on the next step to show the multiplication property. Well, after I've shown multiplication, the next thing to do is to do it. I got to do it in order to get rid of that fraction and to clean up the problem. After that, the next thing to do is subtraction. After you subtract, well, you, that's your operation. Now you have to show substitution. The next step, you need to divide. So you need to show that you're dividing. And then after that, you have to show substitution because that's the final part of the problem. All right, that was the PowerPoint that I showed this or, yeah, that I showed. Um, I'm emailing you this. These are the activity sheets that we did from this lesson. Um, it's going to be tough to see. I'm not going over these, but um, let's see if I can get that going for you so you can see it. The study guide and intervention is what I handed out on the first day. I have answer keys that goes that go along with these, so you can kind of feel your way around what's going on. But the properties are there on the first two. Um, if you look at the middle sheet, you have to be able to explain which one of these properties go along with what's going on here. Now, all of these two properties go along with this. Um, here was your homework. Number seven was a problem that people had some uh, some issues with, but you got the answer key, so you need to make sure that just that you understand what's going on. Um, two six is something that we're probably going to do in class uh, tomorrow, which is Wednesday, the half a day, and we're doing that because um, a lot of people are going to be taking the practice ACT. And then here are the answer keys. Um, I'm going to email these to your mom. Uh, and you're going to have to zoom in on those answer keys so that you can see them. All right. Any questions that you have, by all means, you can send me an email some kind of way or you can have your mom to do that. But for the most part, this was the lesson that you missed. Um, when you get back, I guess I suppose I expect you to take a test. So the test is going to cover paragraph proofs um, and postulates, and also it's going to cover the algebraic proofs in which you just saw. So this was your video. I don't do this often, but this is kind of a special situation. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.